Good afternoon, you guys. This is Paula. Um, back today to work on this winter journal. And if you're hot and sweaty from the temperature, just go through this book. It'll make you chilly. Um, I, you know, I'm okay with this book. I've never done a three ring binder. Uh, the one, there are a few mistakes or a few things I'm not super happy with, but I liked it well enough that I, I wanted to complete it. And, and if someone wants to buy it, I will sell it. It is beautiful. Okay. First of all, it's very beautiful. I had covered it with this very heavy uh, paper. And it was so heavy that it wasn't something you could tear. Which really was dumb on my part because I should have known the corners wouldn't do well. So I put corner, I put corners on it. And um then I started noticing that on the binding, it was rubbing in places, and thinning out, <laughs> no longer than I had it, and I was working on it. So, it's turning out really pretty. So, I went back and I covered it in white snowflake fabric over the paper, which is fine because the paper wasn't torn up or anything. But the hard part was I couldn't get the corner, uh, the Tim Holtz corner pieces off. So it kind of changed the shape of the book a little bit. But I'm telling you, it is, let me show you what it looks like. And I added lace to the binding. Okay. It's, I did add the paper as like a mat on front of the fabric. So you really don't see the fabric. Okay, it just, it's under the lace. Um, and then I added white velvet around all three sides here. Okay, so you can kind of see it has a little bit of an angle, but and here's the inside where you can kind of see the angle. That's where the corner piece is. That, this is never going to break open because it's got that corner piece in it. And in here, because I already, I, the reason I couldn't just take it to another book was, first of all, I didn't have another three ring binder this size, was because I had already done the inside pages and I liked how they had turned out. And so I added... Uh, the, I added the white velvet, then I added some silver velvet, velvet inside, and um, I, I didn't do anything in here. I left that just like it was because it was fine, but I did the silver velvet on the inside, on the front and the back. Okay, so I didn't pull this flower off because there was no pulling it off, so it's, you know, it's a... The silver's around it fine. I mean, it blends so well. And it still has this little side, side tuck with the little snowflake. So, that's the mistake I made. The book is still just fine. Um, I wouldn't spend my time and energy on it if I didn't think it was. I'm going to kind of see if I can keep this from glaring completely in your faces. This is the main lamp that helps me see, but it also is the one lamp that glares. <laughs> so I'm going to push it up here out of the way and see if our video still turns out. Okay, so we've been through this. I'll show you what I've done since I talked to, to you guys yesterday and we did a few things together. I, um, I did add some, a few things. I zigzagged all the about a lot of the papers, okay? 
and some of them I did like a zigzag doodle, which is what this is. And then I I did some collage tags, like this is silver paper and fat white fabric and some uh, lace, and I just zigzagged on one line and straight stitched on the other and put it up there. I did two of those, one on the top and one on the side. I think four or five pages have white lace, and it's put on with blue. I did some side pockets. I think I already showed you those, and I'm going to go fast here. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, I did zigzag on pages I wouldn't normally zigzag on. Uh, there's side tuck. Now here is a pocket, you know, with your little, this houses a pocket. Um, I added some snowflakes at the top and the bottom this, of this paper. Uh, made a pocket here, glued a clustered fabric lace, sorry, silk kind of flower with a button there. And, and then I did my tiered paper you know where it comes out, different heights. I didn't do it on that side, just on this side. Okay, now, let me put that back in. Now, and I went, I did some different stitches. This is the, this is an envelope with this point, uh, this poem. It's called Lessons in Faith, but it talks about the snow. And it has a journaling. I, I glued this on the front of the envelope. And here's the flap. But you can see here where I glued that on, I made a pocket on the other side. And here, there's also a journaling uh, sheet. So, I, you know, I added, added that, but it did give a lot of... Look at all these kids playing. I love this. Now, this I glued to the blue paper behind it. I put glue down the middle, made on the sides or the top and bottom, and I made wintertime tags that can be journaled on here on the side. Here I made a pocket out of, fa out of the fabric. Now, I went ahead and zigzagged up here and just kind of made it all work itself together. I put a snowflake on some sorry silk and a little dot of glittery, a little glittery dot. Inside is a journaling box. Okay, so these are fun. This was inspired by Wendy. Um, I like to watch her videos. I'm gonna t to take this and make a pocket out of it right here, I think. Because uh, I don't like it not being zigzagged at the bottom. So I'm going to leave that sticking up right there for now. And and on we go. Here's the other side one that I did. I don't, I don't know that I made anything else since we did the video. Other than doing all the stitching and sewing the lace on. Um, I put a belly band on. I put the flip on. This is a vintage bow button. Super, super cool. And I got a bag of vintage buttons in Ohio, and it, it was super cool. Another journaling card. Some more lace. Now, some more snowflakes across the top and bottom. Here's another one of those pockets where the tags pull out, and there's a seam of glue down the middle. Here's the last page. And here is the pocket we made out of a bag. And we made the tag. And we made the uh, smaller tag. Now, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to, let me tell you how big this is. Just so if you're interested in, or you're thinking about it, you can. It's nine and a quarter by seven and a half okay i don't know how many pages yet because i'm not finished with that part of it so i'm going to set it right here to the side 
so we can kind of make some things. And actually, I think I'm going to move, I'm going to open it back up to where I was. Uh, and we're going to do a bingo card in here because I had a place picked out to do a bingo card. And I took it out of there. <laughs> Way to go, Paula. Um, I don't have any real plans. I just thought we could create together today. Uh, I think I'm going to do it right here kind of the same blues you know i got these in a vintage place yesterday i like them way better than the red and blue ones i found i they're not easy to find and they're not cheap this one was three dollars i think so i don't and i don't like that they write on them i already erased the price but i couldn't get the booth number off because they decided to write on them Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do with this is I thought we could cover it with some um, lace, or a little bit of lace anyway. I gotta see what I got. Let me grab this stack over here. I've got several different kinds of lace just kinda of laying here. So, and this is all vintage lace that I've had. Um, can you guys see okay? Okay. This is vintage lace that I have had. And I think what we'll do is kind of make a pocket out of it down here. I know this is not anything new and exciting, but um, I really want this to look, how do I put it? I want it to look just like a little classy winter book. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to put make that a pocket, but I also want to put some kind of winter photo on here. So let me grab um, the papers that I have right here that still have winter pictures. And listen, I, I don't even remember what I have <laughs> as far as pictures go. I don't want, I'd like something that's as white as can be. Um, I love these little guys playing in the snow. Look at that. How cute is that? It has a little bit of a green tinge, but the poem that I put on the envelope had a little bit of a green tinge. So I'm not going to rule that out. That's pretty too. So it's down to those two. I'm going to make journaling cards out of some of like, look at that one. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to make journaling cards out of some of these. I love these kids ice skating. Just on a cold winter's night. And I love this church, you guys. Isn't that pretty? It's the wrong color altogether. Altogether wrong. And then we have, you know, this. We also have this, which I like. Um, I know we've got it in the book somewhere. But I also like this. And I think rather than cover up our whole bingo card, you know, maybe we'll just do part of it. What do you think about that? We'll just do this real cold and give me a jacket part. Okay. So, let's do it kind of like a do it down the middle or do we want to do it down just slightly over let's do it slightly over and i'm just going to bend it over i think now there's not going to be any inking going on in this book the only inking i would do is if i were um like doing you know lines or something that i needed to put on here okay let me get some glue you know, I might go back. I have a, I have a, a thing that you can add. You can add lines um, for people to journal on, which I just think personally, if you're gonna journal, you want it to look nice. It's lots more fun if you have lines. Now, this is not holding down. So what I'm gonna do, I should have put glue on the top. Is I'm just gonna put dab some glue underneath it just to hold it down in the middle yeah 
there we go. The thing I like about bingo cards is they're different every time you you do anything with them, you know? Okay, now see, when we cover that up, it's just going to mimic the snow. Now, I am going to add glue around the outside and the bottom. Um, or I may just pull it around and add it. Let's do that. And then, we'll, well, let's add it on the bottom first. Because we don't want to not have a place to keep the journaling cards from falling down. Okay. We'll do that first, and then I like it to kind of hang down so it gives it like a little ruffle because this is not, and you want it to be as straight as you can before you glue it back around the back. I'm trying to avoid touching it, if you know what I mean. Okay, I'm going to lay it right here on its tummy. Just like I'm talking, just like there's a baby here for it to lay on its tummy. <laughs> I hope you guys had a really great Thanksgiving weekend. Um, got a lot done. I did get two gift spot. Woohoo! But I finally found my table and chairs. Um, you know, I haven't had a dining room suit because I had my um, housekeeper really liked it and I knew I wasn't going to keep it so I just had her do you know like three rounds of spring cleaning for me and um, so I didn't have to pay her for that she just you know that was her payment because you know she's she could use the extra help and she definitely helped me by doing the spring cleaning. So, I'm glad this is not the side we're working with because it's pretty ugly. So, I think I'm going to pull our book over. Get this glue right here off. Pull our book over here. Now, what do we want to put under here? I'm thinking I'm thinking that maybe nothing. I just kind of like that it's decorated. What do you guys think? Does everything have to have something under it, do you think? The reason I say that is look at the back of my tag. There's glue here. There's glue there and there. I mean, it will dry. And I'm really I made it for this pocket here in the front. Let's just do the pocket in the front. I'll make an executive decision. That way we know it's gonna be um we'll make a little pocket for it on the front and this book is gonna have a lot of room, a lot of journaling space. So there won't be a problem with that. Plus, I wanted to kind of center center it a little bit. Here we go. I probably should have took that out to work on it. So I can be sure that it's going to glue down flat. I thought... We could either, I'm trying to decide what we want to put in here. Let's think on it as we move along, because we'll come back, but um, I want to give this a chance to dry because I keep sticking to it. Now, I wish you would look, when I glued this down, my ribbon pulled itself up. That's weird. Oh well, it's okay to dry. We might have to add some add another strip of ribbon down here. Well, let's just see what we got. We could do that. Hmm. Do we do that or do we do piece of fat piece of fabric? I personally like the fabric better. It's not too over the top. 
and it's a different texture, you know. So let's do that instead. Some of you probably just said, no, Paula, don't do it. <laughs> the reason I know that is because I've done it a million times with the person I'm watching. You know, it's like, uh-uh, I'll be watching a video and I'll have my earplugs in. And my husband, he, he laughs at me because he's he's over on his computer doing something. And he... And he hears me go, uh-uh, no. <laughs> he said, are you telling them not to do what they're doing? I said, yes, so-and-so wants to do so-and-so, and it's not going to look good. So we've all done it, right? Okay, so we're going to have a pocket right here. But let's let this dry a little bit first before we, we do that part. Now... Let me grab the next thing. Now, when I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I've had this template forever that I'm about to, sh to show you. Um, it is, I'm thinking I might do, I might cut out one of these pictures with this. Um, let me look at this poem and see what it says. It's about, it's about friends, uh, but I really want as much as possible for it to be about snow. Let me get one of these over here. I don't know what that is. I just thought we could um, cut out a envelope with some of this. Um, let's see, the snow's melting all around with all its water rushing down to join the others on the land to form the rivers close at hand. The sounds of water spilling free flows through the mountains and the trees by rushing, twisting, roaring by at times will slow to breathe a sigh. Then on again to form the falls whose vision from below enthralls and pools of blue and green abound where waiting rainbow trouts are found. This all leads down to flattened land across the plains and through the sand and on its flow so wild and free to end its journey at the sea. Basically, that that's a cool one because, oh, but I really like this one. This is River Journey. Um, okay, I read that one to you. I'm gonna read this one real fast. But look at this picture. Isn't that pretty? Spring Water is what it's called. Uh, there is a little spring beside the lane whose waters are as clear as crystal grass that bubbles up into a little pool, rock rimmed and white and cold where moving shadows pass across its face like figures on a screen where tangled grass and weeping willows lean. It tastes snail and twigs and sodden leaves. So, no, I don't know if I like that one or not. The odors of the earth, green moss and peat, the roots of the quiet trees and rotting logs, the crumbling bank where cowslips wash their feet and tiny minnows dart with lightning speed among the roots where wild ducks come to feed. And so the little spring of water holds the very care and essence of the earth, the taste of melted snow and sleet and rain, clover and sor sorrel root, the trembling myrrh of the birds who root amidst the treetops high and breathe the wholesome fragrance of the sky. Well, you know what? We're gonna see how the envelope lays on both of these. Because basically they're both about what happens when the snow melts away, right? So, this template is called a, the Create-A-Lope. <laughs> and a girl get, there was like a um, bring and take table 
So you have this bring and take table and if there's something you don't want, if you bring something, you can take something. So she brought these and I brought something else and I took these because I get so aggravated at the envelope uh, punch board <laughs> when I'm wanting to make different shapes, but I only wanted it really for this envelope. Um, so I've got a look, here's one that's already made, okay? And so it ends up this size. But I um, I want to know by looking at this. Okay, see this is this is the top flap, this is the bottom flap, and this is this, the part that folds in. So it's going to be like this. I want it to show the poem on the other side, or you know part of it. It's not going to show the whole thing. Or I really like this house. I'm gonna have it show the house. And if the poem ends up in there, great. And the nice thing about this little template is you can see, like I can bring it down. It's not gonna get the whole poem, but I'm gonna bring it down as far as I can. And it probably won't get the whole house because see now the house is not in the center by doing that. Um, if I brought the thing down over the flap, either any, even if I center, when I centered, it's still going to cut off part of the point. So I'm not going to worry about the point. Part of it might be on there, and that's great, but I mostly want to get this little house on there because it looks so cozy. So I'm just going to take a pencil, you know, like we all do my big old arm out there got my I got my PJs on so if you don't see a, a, a sleeve on my arm it's because I've got my short sleeve Johnny shirt on I'm trying to think what time it is and I'm already in my PJs 3 <laughs> 30 it, it's a cold day today and I just didn't want to deal with putting on clothes. I wasn't going anywhere today and I thought if I go anywhere I can I can put on clothes and I do that a lot. I don't know about any of you guys but I, I just since I retired you know it's kind of like I think I can uh, dress however I want. I don't ever answer my door during the day because my husband would have a fit. So we're going to cut this out um, and it's a real easy thing to cut out. Now what we can do, I want to make this something to tuck into something. So we may very well tuck it into the bingo card. Either that or we'll tuck it behind something. I just decided um, since it's been Thanksgiving, you know, and been, I, we've all been busier, uh, I haven't had time to come up with anything too creative in my head. I've got some things I'm working on. I'm trying to decide. Um, there's a book I want to make, possibly for myself. Um, and if if it's liked well, and 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 if someone wants uh, one like it, they can custom order it. But. And I, who knows, when I'm done, I may decide to sell it. But I want to use some Tim Holtz paper and some canvas. I did not come up with this book idea. I um, saw it somewhere. But I do not have a journal. And um, so... I keep saying I'm gonna make myself a journal. I'm gonna make myself, a, I'm gonna keep the rest of that poem right there just in case we want to throw it in somewhere. Maybe, maybe we can throw it on the opposite side of the flap. That's what we'll do. But now look, see how it turned out? And that's gonna be a pretty envelope. So we're gonna flip it over. All right, and then you have another part of, of this little template which is the, look at the glue on my finger. You guys, I took my fingernails off all by myself. I wasn't going to pay 
And now they look pretty rough. And I have sanded them, buffed them, doctored them, treated them with love. And um, it may take a few days before I, I'm not going to put polish on them until I know they're... I did not like those fingernails. Don't get the dipped nails. They were real thick. Okay, so you line each corner of this template up inside. I like this because you don't have to score. Just line it up in there and you hold it really well with, with your opposite hand and then you just pull it towards you and this is your way of scoring. So you just take your, kind of take your finger down there and fold it over. And there you go, look at that, see? Now I'm gonna turn it. Now this is old paper, so I don't know how well it's gonna score. It might tear. If it does, we'll just make one out of regular paper uh, or be more gentle. I wasn't too gentle. Okay, there we go. Of course, the poem, poetry is going to be upside down, probably. Let's fold this back. Just always keep hold of your, your, your center where your journaling card would be. And I use this middle template to know that, you know, to make journaling cards to put inside a lot of times. And um, it's lots of fun to use these. I've made one of every one. There's like five or six. Now, I don't know if you can go online and find find these, but I'll tell you right now, I like them better. They're more accurate than the um, envelope punch. Okay. Oh, and look, there's a poem inside, but we're going to glue it down, so that's not going to do us any good. Um, now, on this side, this, uh, this is going to be upside down. So we could glue the rest of the poem upside down. What do you think about that? I need to erase. Somebody just stole my pencil. I'm the only one here, but somebody stole my pencil. <laughs> I'm going to erase um, what's on here. I'm going to get a bigger eraser. Be here all day with that thing. Just, and I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for the person who ends up with this book because they may very well want that poem. Um, if it were me, it wouldn't really matter that much, quite honestly, because um, I'd probably forget to read it, but some people really love poetry. Okay, so this is going to go like this, and this will fold over. So, I'm going to lay this right here and line it up with that poem. Now see, there's a time in my life I would never have thought of doing this. You guys do that to me. You make me think, what would, what would someone else want? You know, makes a difference. Okay. And also, while I'm thinking about it, I don't know if you guys remember the manila folder that we never finished. And actually, I took that video down because there was someone that complained that I didn't know what I was doing with that video. And it said, learn it, learn it or don't do it or something like that. And, which was rude, but, um... What she didn't understand was I had made it like five times and I did have it down. I had made one or two and had no problems. But then when I got on video, it was like, you know, it's like nothing was cooperating. I don't know if I felt pressured from the, you know, being on, on the camera, needing to hurry. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm looking to see if I need to, I think I need to lower it a little bit. Just a little bit down to the line because that's not going to work if I don't. So the words will be separated just a little. There's no other way to do it. 
Okay, now you flip it over. Hang on to it and flip it over. Make sure it's still lined up. And it is. Yeah, this uh, this uh, this paper is old. And so just kind of a word uh, for you is that whenever you do something with older paper like this, when you score, be very gentle. But I didn't, it didn't go completely through. If you do that and you still want to keep it, just use some washi. Washi, but just be sure you glue your washi down. I think washi is getting cheaper and cheaper and higher and higher in cost. Um, washi will not stay on. You know, I remember when I made my first journal and I had no idea that it wouldn't stay on because I hadn't used that much of it. I was so ticked when I pulled it out to ship it. When someone bought, bought it, when I pulled it out to ship it, I would always go through it and make sure everything is, you know, in perfect shape. And it wasn't, um, the washi was coming up. Okay, so... Oh, wait a minute. Wrong side. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? So we're going to do it like this. So it's going to look upside down to you, but that's all right. Did we get all of the poem? Let me just look if we got... We did, guys. We got the whole poem. That worked out. But we did have to separate it. But at least we got the whole poem. So let's add some glue. I'm not inking in this book, so... Um, you know, some things might look like they need to be inked, but I want this to be clean. Um, it, I didn't want it to have like a grungy look. I just wanted it to have a clean, snowy look. Okay, so I'm putting this right down here. Centering it up on the inside of the flap. And... I could have put it on the outside of the flap, but this is not the kind of flap that, unless you pin it down, it's not the kind of flap you're gonna seal. You know what I'm saying? So, we're gonna fold these sides in, and let's see how far up. Now see, like if you wanna read that, there it is. Um, a lot of people won't even notice it, but that's all right. The ones that watch this video will. So you're gonna put glue on both of your hinges here. I have worn glue all day long. I've had glue on me all day long. Okay. Well, for some reason, I didn't get it perfect right there, but it's, look how cute it is, you guys. But this is wanting to split. Can you see? So I'm thinking what we could do, because we even have this blue space right here, to reinforce this, we'll add some washi under there, because see, it's wanting to tear. So I'm going to kind of pull this up a little bit. Don't fret. If this doesn't work, we'll just start over. I just don't want to, I just don't like to give people stuff that is not um, what I would consider, what I would consider, um, I guess I won't send this one because it wants to tear. So we'll do this other one. Um, now this is going to do the same sort of thing because it is a um, vintage paper, but we know that now, so I'll be super careful. And looks like the poem is going to all fit on this one. Um, okay, I'm sorry, wasting your time here. I might get an ugly vidi. I might get an ugly message. Please be kind. You know, we YouTubers, 
and those of you that are um, know that we don't do this because it brings us fame or money because it sure doesn't we do it because we enjoy sharing our craft with you and we never ever say I'm perfect at it <laughs> But, um, and I love that everybody knows we all make mistakes. Sometimes things just don't go the way you planned, even if you've done it a hundred times, you know. Uh, sometimes you just don't have things go just as you plan. And um, if we did, man, alive, how perfect would we be? Okay. I'll trim this up a little bit. One thing nice about this is it's, it is super easy to cut out. Not a lot of turns and you know, all of that, you just, you can trace it super fast. You could sit down and cut these and watch TV. Like if you wanted to make a bunch. The thing I like about them is that they're tag size. Like once you fold them up, um, you can put journaling paper or a letter or whatever you want inside here. Our story about your journal, if your journal has a name, I know there's a lot of people out there, I don't do this, but there's a lot of people out um, that likes to name their journals and tell a story about their journals. And um, that's not me, but that doesn't, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, so now, we're gonna try this time to get it more square too. So start at the, do your bottom corners first to just make sure they line up. And let's just fold it up first. Now, remember not to pull too hard. We'll just pull gently. And the main thing, I guess, when I say don't pull too hard is don't rub too hard. you got to rub it to a certain amount. But um, what I think I might do, because they're, they are, they're old, is I might, just before we glue it, go ahead and just put some washi on the inside. And, um, and then that way you can't see it. And I'll try to color coordinate just in case. You might be able to see it a tiny bit right here, but I know how we can keep it from being seen. When we cut out to cover the flap here, we just cut it down longer. So, you know me and my envelopes. It's my thing. It's doing envelopes. I know it's crazy. I, I, I just, I've got this thing about doing envelopes. <laughs> Let me grab some washi. Since I didn't plan that. So we probably should get blue washi or silver washi, preferably blue. I don't think I want much more silver in this book. I feel like it's got enough bling bling going on. I don't know if you guys have gotten the, the new washi box that's out, but man alive, it makes a difference. Okay. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm trying to just find like a polka dot or a... Blue is not something I have a whole lot of. But I do have, I just almost flipped my chair. It kind of got hung in a, okay. I use this Xyron glue. I don't know, Gail uses some that's supposed to be super strong and I can't find it. I don't know the name of it. I had it written down somewhere. I need to ask her where she gets it. And mine, every time it glues shut. And I have to work at it because, you know, guys, I'm not, you know I'm not strong. There we go. And it just kind of 
but this glue is is strong <laughs> it just kind of does its own thing okay I'm gonna move my template and I'm going to put washi on the top and the bottom because this is not real wide washi by no means but it's the right colors and I know you guys probably know this too I get so aggravated let me make sure I'm in the camera I get so aggravated when you buy washi you know everybody wants every washi out there I don't want every washi out there I just want the washi colors that I'll use you know and I of course wanted Christmas ones and stuff like that stupid thing won't stay setting up okay so I'm pulling this down as low as I can but still cover that crease now you might still see a little bit of um, where the paper kind of breaks away on the outside but you won't see it I mean it won't break more yeah this this top part wasn't too bad anyway and then just kind of trim around trim around your washi and um, we'll do it at the bottom too because that was the one that I noticed the most let me get this stuff off my table I'm so lacking space I know you guys are gonna laugh because some of you've seen my room um, but <laughs> I have to set things on my trash can when I need to get into, you know, like my washi tape or whatever, I have to set stuff in my trash can, on top of my trash can to hold it. I told my husband, and he just looks at me like I'm crazy. He knows that I'm, I'm not, but he's kind of like, where would you put another shelf? Where would you put whatever I'm talking about? I have a big armoire that he got me many years ago for our anniversary and I want to move it out and get another Ikea shelf because I don't have enough when you when you do books you have to buy books <laughs> Tracy knows you did you just cleaned out a bunch of books Tracy but so whenever you do books you have to have a place to put books and I've told you guys this before. We're in our downsized house that, you know, from where we used to live. And we didn't bring a bunch of books with us. I brought all my scrapbooking stuff because I couldn't part with it. But my scrapbook room in that house was bigger than um, the one I'm in now. And you know I took over our master bedroom because my husband wanted to spend 50 or sixty thousand dollars to add on to my scrapbook room and I'm like uh-uh that's a vacation <laughs> and so we decided we don't lay in our bedroom and watch TV we don't you know we go in there and we go to bed so we just took one of the guest rooms or we took my scrapbook room and um, it has a chest and door nightstand and our king our oversized king size bed in there and we have plenty of room okay now that will secure it okay I'm gonna close the lid on this before I get glue on everything so we're gonna add our glue here maybe we can move on from this we'll see and I try not to get over over glue happy or glue happy I should say when I make these because I don't like it to seep now you can see here on the bottom where that one tried to crack but it's okay because we know it's not going to crack through that gives it that vintage look now then this will fold down and it will be just fine here's the front that cute shows all that snowy scene okay so now we need a journaling card to go inside. Let me see if I have just a piece of, um, let me see if I have just a piece of white cardstock over here. I have everything else in my room over here. If not, we may just do something, uh, I just don't 
do that. Well, we're going to put a journaling card in there. And um, we don't have to do it now, but it will be this size. And we'll just slip it in. And um, I'll show you how it fits in. I say I'll show you. This thing's lots, it's lots heavier, so it won't fit in right now. But we will, we will do that. And, and I have this little clip that I made with one of the little cluster, flower, made a little flower cluster. Um, I'm going to clip on here. And let me bring our book back. Now, I don't think I'm going to use it in this, but we can use it as an example. Um, I want to do, uh, where did I, what did I do with my crazy Paula? This could go in here and be fine, but it covers up our little scenery right here. So I got to think about this. This may be where this ends up. But I want to think about it. So I'm going to lay this to the side for now. Because we're going to end up with other pockets. You know what I mean? And that would be alright. So the next thing I want to try making is I, I would, I think we need to ink this. Because it's going to be so white. You know, if I had done it in two different colors, it wouldn't have been though. Why don't we do that? Why don't we just do that? I know I have some scraps over here that should work. Let's just use that right there. I have some small pieces of cardstock. I just don't have big pieces. Okay, so we'll use one of these backgrounds, which did not punch very well with my punch. And that is not nice. Okay, and then you're going to cut, you have two circles the same size, okay? You just want, what, let me see what size it is. They, these are, it would be better if, if they were bigger, but I didn't have any that were bigger. This is a two and a half inch punch, the big one is. And then you want one that is a size down. Um, and this is a one and three fourths. So, I have all different circles, but I didn't have the ones that just fall perfectly in line with the other. So, you want to punch two circles, okay? And then, and I'll, this is also something I saw Wendy do, um, and, and it's making a little pocket. And then you're going to glue a little picture on here, and you're going to slide it in. But, instead of gluing a picture on there, I want to put a snowy scene on there. And I'm going to grab our snowy scenes, but I want it to be bright colors this time. Um, and this one's already backed on a... Um, backed on to something that's heavy, you know? So... I'm trying to get all my scraps. I should have had these out and ready. Now, see, we could do, this one shows more of a scene. We could do like this tree branch with a little barn in the background. Let's do that. Okay, let me hold it up to my punch. Be easier to do that than to try to, and if I had the next punch, if, you know, if I had the next two punches down, I would, I would even mat it. But see, we're going to flip our punch over and decide, do we want the barn? Do we want just the snow? I want some of the barn. I want some of the snow. So, we're going to just get a little bit of all of it. And if I can get my hands to hold still. I'm all wobbly. You guys remember weebles? Weebles wobble, and but they don't fall down. I wish I could say that was me. <laughs> I wobble, but I don't fall down. Okay, so you want to make sure you have it on the right side. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it onto this circle to give it a little more strength. Because it was a flimsy piece of paper. And I would ink this if I were doing a different project. Okay. And then I'm just going to... 
put ink on it just a little bit here and there just to glue it to the paper and then and this is really pretty done with craft paper and you know Tracy does a lot of little small images in her digital kits and this is perfect for that sort of thing too okay so now we're gonna do take our two big circles let me see do it like this you want to line one of the circles up to the bottom of the complete circle for some reason my big my bigger circle punch has got like little snaggies it's leaving on my I don't like that now you want to go really really thin with your glue because you want to have room for that little circle to go inside like a pocket you know what I'm talking about there so we're gonna take this and we're gonna go really thin on the edge so we have room for our little our little snow scene okay and you know this book is the kind of book that if you have children even our grandchildren either one you can do um, like snow pictures in it. it would, you could even mat pictures and and put in this and journal about all your winter, especially if you live in a place that snows a lot. We hardly ever get snow. I mean, we've had snow once this year. I'm going to trim these little shaggy areas off of here. Now, if I would ink or use a different color it would have worked too but if you ink if you do a regular project you want to ink this so you can see where the pocket is in comparison to the circle I'm just trimming around here to kind of get it to be nice and clean now you can take your hole punch your little, you know, your seven eighths inch is what mine is. And you can go ahead and put a little divot right here, just so you know that it, it I should have done it before I put it on here, just, just so you know. I don't even know if it's gonna get far enough back there to even work. Nope, didn't do it. But you can put a little divot right here with your hole punch. Now let's keep our fingers crossed, guys. See if it's gonna fit. Yay, it did. So you could put a grommet to give it something different, a different look, like a silver grommet. Uh, or you, you could doodle. And you know that because it's so wide and we're not using ink, I think we're gonna doodle. Now, I'm not gonna doodle a kind of doodle that takes forever. The first thing I'm gonna do is just go straight across and don't don't think about it. All right, and this is just gonna be a messy circle is what we're gonna do next. I'll move our little, little picture so we don't mess it up. So you're not gonna think about it. If you go off, big deal, no big deal you just come back and cross over it. And then it's not as noticeable. Because you're actually going to do at least two, if not three, little circles till you get them like you want them. And they don't have to be perfect. And we're gonna do it on the top also. And if you can't get around the whole circle, stop and go to the other end and then just pass it by to do your next messy circle. I love messy circles. I like to scrapbook and do messy circles around the outside of my page, especially if I'm using white paper for a background. And then you can kind of just mix them together there if you want to. And I think I'll just do like a a little squiggly line there and a little squiggly line there and right here 
I do that in odd numbers because I just think the eye likes the odd numbers better. Okay, so it helped not to put your barn upside down. So there you go. There's your little guy. Now, instead of doing a grommet, I mean, I don't do them all the time, but I, you know, I have done grommets. You just put it on your small punch and you know, you have in your crocodile, you'll have um, two different sizes. Um, just do it in the small one. And that way, everything on my desk just wants to be right on top of me. Can I just say, it's driving me crazy. You know, I just don't, I just threw my trash into my, um, What's that thing called? <laughs> it's been one of those days, guys. Into my washi box. <laughs> Telling you guys, it's been a week. Okay, so I'm just going to add some blue thread because we have so much white going on. Not thread, some blue um, fabric because we have so much white going on. Gonna fold this in half. I like raggy ties at the top. I like fibers, don't get me wrong. But I like little raggy tops too. Um, this will be the last video until it's time to do a flip through of this book um, because I'm real close to being done with it. And um, it's a fun little book. All right. Let me fold it up. Lay down there and be still, little tag. I've never made one of these. This is the first one. I've watched, um, Wendy does it a lot, and they're so cute in her little albums. So I just thought, well, we'll try that. It's a first for everything, right? First time for everything. All right. And I, another thing I like about using fabric is you can pretty well twist it where you want it to go to, even if it doesn't have wire. But I'm not real picky about it having, you know, the right side of the fabric showing or whatever. I'm more picky about it, the length that I cut it. And sometimes I like them just to stick straight up, which are cute too that way. And sometimes I don't cut them at an angle, I'll cut them straight. Now, I'm not sure if I wanna put it in there cause see it won't take up all the room. And I think I'm gonna make a little baby tag to put in here too. And um, that way we don't have too much in there. When I say baby tag, I mean this is a baby tag, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, wait a minute, let me do something different. Um, I don't know if this will work or not. Let's try it and see. It may be too small. Well, I didn't even get it up under the punch. And if it is, we'll just get some something bigger. Yeah, see, it's too small to even go up in there. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it and hope that I get it close enough. This is what I do when you, I don't know if you guys do this or not. You think you're gonna cut a tag out and before you know it, you've cut the paper to pieces because you can't get your tag sides to get even. So aggravating. Although I got lucky this time. And, um, this has some silver little um, polka dots on it. And so I'm gonna put it in here with this. And you can journal on the back of this as well. And this time I think I'm gonna use a little tiny piece of um, this little white. And it's gonna have to be tiny to get through there. Um, because it is a little, 
And me messing with anything tiny is a joke. Come on. There it goes. Grab it. Ha ha. Okay. It's one of those days that you want hot chocolate. I think I'm going to have hot chocolate, guys. Aren't now? Now you're going to want hot chocolate when we get through with our video. I'm going to, I bought some marshmallows too, and I'm going to make me some hot chocolate. And I'm going to get my computer. I haven't been on it today to even check my messages. And I'm going to answer some of my questions and comments, and then watch a couple. YouTube videos, which I don't get to do as much as I would like. You guys were getting really close to the 1,000, um, the 1,000 uh, subscribers. Keep telling your friends. We will be having a drawing when that happens. I think that I'm going to make a traveler's notebook. Um, a traveler's notebook insert, you know, and I kind of have something in mind. Now, see, don't you agree that just, you can see the scene in the background, and I just like that better. Okay, so we got our envelope done. We still need journaling paper. <laughs> I just found some. I'm going to take this clip off of here. I don't like it on here. And I'm going to cut this out. And then I'm going to show you something I don't know if you know. You you might if you've seen Gail's videos. I think she does this too, and I've been doing it for some time, but I just I just broke out a new piece of cardboard because I was so sick of dealing with the other one. Okay, let's see. Look at that. That's perfect. I'm just going to mark on the little ends here so I can... And I will cut this slightly smaller because I want, I want it to um, not give me grief going in and in and out of that envelope. If you know what I mean. I can hear the helicopter going over our house. Just up the street from us is a church called Rama. And I, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Tulsa or Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, Rama has so many lights, it's crazy. I mean, I, I don't even know what the number's at now, but they've been doing it for years and years. And so we also have a service um, during the month of well, that starts the day after Thanksgiving that where you can take a helicopter or um, a limo and you can go and see all of the, um, I feel like this needs something. Like, do you guys agree? How about we put one of those little collage things up there like we did on the, um, hmm like we did on the other thing, but I don't know if that's what it needs. I think we should have used a different paper. I think it's kind of bland. Um, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but it seems a little bland. bland. Huh, that doesn't work either. Um, but anyway, how about we just put a strip of this on here? That'd brighten up anybody's day. <laughs> um, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of lights. I mean, probably millions. I don't know what the number is. You can go Google it. And you can probably see pictures of it. But they put, they even put lights around all the branches. I mean, around the trunks on the trees and... It's crazy. We take our grandkids, you know, not every single year, but they serve hot cider and um, cocoa and stuff like that. And and they have a bridge that it has like a, 
it's kind of like a tunnel bridge, but it's not really a tunnel. It's um, that people walk over and the lights change colors and then they have the, you know, the lights that keep, keep up with the music and it's just, and every character you can imagine <laughs> they have, you know, as far as things that light up, snowman, deer, Santa, sleigh, gingerbread man, the nativity, you go on and on and on and it is definitely a cool place and then at the 4th of July they do fireworks and they're crazy we can see the fireworks from our house but we hear the helicopters I don't know how many times as soon as it gets about just barely dusk and um, it's fun it's fun you know kids are out there having a good time and I'm gonna put a snowflake on here I still don't know where we're gonna tuck this. Oh, I do know where we're gonna tuck it, guys. Remember a minute ago when we first got on camera, I said, I've gotta come back here and make a pocket. We'll do that next. But I really wanted to stamp on, we're gonna stamp on this thing first. Okay, there we go. Now, you know I can't do a journaling card that I don't put something at the edge of it so you know it's in there. So we're gonna glue this little piece right here. It's just a thing I do. I want people to know when they open an envelope or whatever that there's something in there. And um, it might not always be perfectly centered but it's gonna be on there. Okay guys, now we're gonna stamp on here and we're gonna stamp with blue ink since that's our only other option. <laughs> we put the lid on this glue. Let me see how many minutes we are. Oh my gosh, we're over an hour. Oh my gosh, my husband's gonna go, you're crazy. Okay, we'll stamp on this and then we'll be done. Um, I've never used this particular stamp. So this is corrugated cardboard, okay? So you just take off one side of, you start off like this, and then you take off one, the layer on one side, and then you, you start inking it up like it was a, like it's a stamp. This will not be perfect, okay? But it will kind of give, lines uh, for you to write on but it will not be perfect just just know that so you're not disappointed and I mean like there's a couple places I actually cut the cardboard so I mean it's definitely not gonna be perfect now I don't know how wet this stays it probably would do better with an archival kind of ink because this is a um, Tim Holtz distressed ink. And I don't know if it will do very good or not because I've not tried it. And then you just rub, give it a second to kind of soak in. We'll see what happens. If it's not great, we'll do it with the archiver. Ta-da! Look how cool that is. Now, I'll do it off camera, but I'll go ahead and stamp down the rest of the page. All right, guys, I got to go. It's a minute and 14 seconds. People are going to think I'm crazy for being on here that long. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And hopefully I can finish this and come back and do a flip through so we can move on to something that's not cold. Anyway, guys, see you next time. Bye.